bit further down the line, as we are now in to Frost and spawning in a bottom right hand position as the blue Zerg player. Good luck. Oh, I forget what GLHB stands for. He told Good us. Good luck, have Batman. Thank you. Good luck, have Batman. <laughs> we have none other than Shibby. And he had a pretty good showing in the, the last, uh, I believe he got all the way to the finals where he fell to Dream. Yeah, and he took a gate of Dream as well. That's right, he's in a very, very pretty hall of points right now, in as far as these qualifiers are concerned. But he's going to be going up, he's a pretty strong Protoss player in the top left-hand corner. He is, of course, in the red colors, representing success. We have Dez. Now, on Sunday, after our big chats, you know, about Warcraft 3 and how this looks like a Warcraft 4 map if they ever made one, etc, etc, etc. I actually yep. played a game of Warcraft 3. I got owned so badly. Dude, like... I used to be proper Starcraft, good at that game. Yeah, playing Starcraft and going back to playing Warcraft is so hard. Because... I would, for example... I, I played random in Warcraft 3. Um, because, you know, bossing it up, why not? And you would get human. I think I got human, and I was like, okay. Uh, and I roughly kind of knew my tech timings in StarCraft. So I got up to Lair while I was creeping with my first couple of units. And my opponent started attacking me, and it was like, why is your army five times my size? It's because I've teched so much, because I'm used to playing StarCraft, that I more or less couldn't get an army out by the same time period in the game anymore. And like, all your okay. innate timings. Just, it's so weird. It's also the upkeep mechanic as well. Like, that was such a weird thing. It was like, it was beneficial early game to only get out a few units and just try and, like, level up your hero unit and... Oh, oh my goodness. And everything takes so much longer to die, so micro is so ridiculously, ridiculously important, but... I love yeah. that, man. Blade Master, most hilarious hero ever. The Stealth amount of rage that can something. be induced. Oh, yeah, I, I used to play Orc, like, a lot. Orc and Undead. And, yeah, Blade Master, um, Wind Walk in. Kill a couple of, like, peons or something, run out again, laugh, get flamed in the chat. It was all good times. I, all right, I Metal, saw a Widow Mind doing the same thing. Let's talk old school. I remember, for a while, I switched to just playing Orc, because this was Warcraft 3, patch 1.09, where Mass, Shaman, and Witch Doctors owned everything. Oh, yeah. Sick that Spirit was launches for the win. <laughs> I still think the funniest thing was Meat Wagon plus Necromancer. That was crazy. Oh, that's a awesome. dead strategy. That made people rich. Really just like, oh, look, skeletons everywhere. Oh, uh, they're killing stuff. Unless I random human and I know this is coming and I go mass priest. Yeah, okay. This spell magic area of effect is so useful. Watching dryads try and dispel skeletons is just funny because they run out of energy so quick and it's not AoE. Now anyway, enough about Warcraft 3, because yeah. even though we're talking about Starcraft, Koenig, yeah. Sibby, he took a gas, he took a hatch, he took a gas and a pool and everything, so that's all good. He's getting a second gas up, which he cancels, it was just for supply, before I get ahead of myself. Meanwhile, Dez, Nexus is coming down, a one gate expand. Very normal, very cool. Everything looking yep, good. So if anyone wondering why we were randomly chatting stuff at the start of the game, it's because this actually looks like a pretty normal opening so far. Frost. For those of you who don't know, is an absolutely huge map, and it's one that we see a little bit less in competitive play, so it's probably worth pointing out. There's this massive divide down the middle of the map, um, which Adam will probably show you in just a moment. Uh, that kind of... Basically, the two halves of the map are separated by these little bridges, it kind of looks like. And as a result, it's not that uncommon to see longer macro games here, where players are on four to five bases. And it also means there's plenty of room um, for run-bys, there's plenty of room for sneaky hidden forward pylons to attack those fourth and fifth bases. So, while it promotes macro play, it also, I think, promotes multitasking. The map is so large that a player who can handle being in three or four places at once is really going to outshine someone who can't here. Now, we do have four gates coming down and the robotic facility here for Dez, and that just means that he does have the option to get a warp prism out if he does want to go for that harassment, but Shibby's play is what's really interesting me. Lair coming up, three extractors already, fourth on the way, Hydras or Swarm Hosts incoming, Jorosa. And the final point I want to make is how can there possibly be ice around a cavern where there is molten lava? That doesn't work. It's impossible. Are you sure that's ice? You sure it's not just jagged rock? Oh no, because it it's like be. stuff hanging down. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that wouldn't occur. That's ice. Yeah, that is ice. Yeah. Maybe See? it's how does that work? How? how? I'm gonna get the person who yeah. does the UK masters maps to change this into water because otherwise it's gonna bother me. Is you know what else um, bothers me as well? Is if you take a look, sort of on my vision. Hang on. Down the, down the south side of the map. That's yep. a massive carrier. I do that not want to. That is a carrier. Yeah, I don't want to have had to deal with that unit when it was That's alive. That's how carriers should have been buffed to, so people made them more often. It's true. Anyway, it just cost too much gas. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Hydrodes. <laughs> Hydrodes coming out, but oh, Colossi. Hydrodes. Awesome. So, Colossi, obviously good against Hydras. Shibby going for this Ling Hydra composition, which he did a lot on Sunday. And I keep thinking it's last week, but it was only a few days ago. But, yeah, this basically means Shibby, he's got to get these roaches out. He also needs a quick hive, potentially, to get down Vipers in order to stop these Colossus just ruining his day. Now, this is why um, oh, being oh. aggressive with the Mothership Corps can very, very often Close pay off. What's that? Close up. Gravatic yes. drive coming down. It's not going to be Colossi. There's a war prism. It's mass drop. All right. This is going to be very interesting indeed. I like the idea of Colossi. So I'm a little bit perplexed because I really wanted to highlight that Des was aggressive with the Mothership Corps and he spotted the Hydralisk Den behind the mineral line in the main base. He did a really good job to spot that as we have a couple of links harassing the gateways here, but it shouldn't be anything too unnecessary. Um, so the fact that he spotted that and went straight for the Robotics Bay, I really oh, like. War Prism! But, it's gonna get sniped off! But, it is gonna go down! Ah, oh, those oh, hides are so good. I think... I don't understand the decision to go War Prism after spotting the Hydra that's dead. I feel like that was a great chance for Dez to go super meta here and immediately get extended Thermal Lancer, Chrono Boost out as many Colossi as possible, and in the very first engagement where Shibby is likely to only have Lings and Hydras out, say, hey dude, what's up, I actually already have three Colossi, and completely wipe the floor with the Zerg player. I, I thought that was his plan. So when he started going Gravitic Drive, I was actually a little bit confused by that, I'll be honest. I was confused as well. It didn't really seem like the normal thing that often comes down, but for the moment, I'd say Shibby's now got himself in a good spot. He's getting up his fourth base before the third is even getting taken by Dez. Dez is going again for another Warp Prism, and that means his Colossus still none down. This is giving Shibby all the time in the world to get out of Spire, to go up to Hive, to get Vipers out, to get a good number of Roaches, a good number of Hydralisks, and just be like, your Colossi mean nothing now. Nothing. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is interesting from Dez. I mean, he's getting... I saw him getting Storm. Has he finished researching? Yes, he has. So Storm has finished now. He's going to have some AoE there. Um, he, I think, has a Colossus out on the field. No, he doesn't, actually. Pardon me. And uh, so he's going to just be sticking to the War Prism and the drop play. I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but I guess we're about to find out. We have the first Warp of Zealous coming in towards the third base location, but the fourth is up in mining, and the fifth is already being taken from Shibby. It feels yeah, like he's just... Shibby's microing faster than Dez can harass. Yeah, Shibby's just like, well, you can kill some more bases because I'm just going to take three for every one you kill. Christmas tree, of yeah. course, here. The overpowered Christmas tree and treasure for Zerg. Only players. Zerg to the bottom right. Yeah. It happened last crazy. cast as well. Yeah, but no. Oh, here we go. Zealots are going to get taken out. They're going to die very quickly. And the War Prism not getting taken down. Gets sniped off first by those Hydralisks. Good control there by Shibby. And he's now just got to get down here in order to try and save his fourth. Is he going to be able to do it with these roaches? Yes, he should. Yeah, he should. And so I'm really not liking it. I'm just going to say it straight out. I'm really not liking the graphitic drive decision right now. Um, he hasn't used it to get away from units attacking the war prisoners in this game now. He used the war pins to target down the hatch at the third base instead of workers, and the hatch actually survived. And as a grand result of that, Shibby has killed a single worker this game. All of that investment, all of that time spent allowing Shibby... Look at Shibby's upgrades right now. Plus one air weapons, two, two. Hydra upgrades as well. Corruptor's coming out. Uh, um, this just looks great for Shibby at this point. There is Storm, though. A good number of High Templar, too, so that could be pretty big. Folk Nova Charge being triggered. The Force Field's actually going to zone out a lot of this army, and that means this Nexus could get focused down. Big Storm, though, and that is the sort of damage that Dez needs, but he's going to lose this Nexus if Shibby chooses so, and he does. Snipes it down, and that means that it's currently a two-base Protoss up against a five-base Zerg. And even if this army dies, which it will, 
any damage done here by Shivy. He can just resupply near instantly. He's flooding out units. He's got all the lava in the world that he could want. He's got 81 drones. And there isn't enough for Dez to go for a quick counterattack at the moment. Yeah, I agree. I'm feeling quite pessimistic for Dez um, at this point of the game, unfortunately. If you take a look at just the production tab, so much stuff is going on for the shipping. He's getting his Hive on the way. 2-2 two -two and the Hydra upgrades are now about to complete, so they'll be ready for the next engagement. Um, but to talk positively, I also want to say that Dez has the mechanical ability to take games off of Shibby, and he's proven himself to be a pretty good Protoss player in the past. What I still think in this game, if he saw the Hydra Den, and then straight out of the robotics bay, immediately pumped out extended thermal ants and attacked with the first couple of colossi, he might have gotten some purchase there. There would have been no roaches out for Shibby, there would have been no spire, and Shibby would have found a really difficult to hold, and you would have forced a ridiculous number of links out of him. As it stood, though, I just feel the tech choices haven't really served Dez as well as he would like. No, it's... That's a bit of a shame as well, because the War Prism had potentially still trying to get more to work with it, but Shibby now moving in with just a lot of units. There are some Storms there. There is still not a single Colossus on the field, though. The Storms have to go down fairly soon, and there they go, but the Roach is just plowing through. The Stalker's taking so much damage. It's 2-2 up against 2-0 upgrades. About to be 3-0, but still, the Roaches, they don't need even to trade costs effectively. They just need to whittle down this army and be like, Dez, your main's pretty much mined out. I know I've killed your third, and I've got all of the bases exactly. on my side of the map. I don't need to be effective. I just need to make sure you don't get maxed out. That's exactly the problem. You hit the nail on the head there, Maddles. Um, this opening from Dez and this strategy going into the mid-game gives Shibby the opportunity to say, uh, I think I can just make non-stop units and just keep throwing them at you and say that your economy can't support defending this indefinitely. And that's what he's doing. He just had 31 roaches pop, mate. And he's going to be sending them straight towards the third base. No questions asked. If he can snipe the Nexus, he will. If he can't, then he's just going to pick up as much of the army as he possibly can. And then behind this, he's got the Ultralisk Cavern. He's got the Greater Spire. He can go into any tech he wants to at this point and still take another couple of bases behind it. His bank is 3k, 1.5k in just about a minute's time. And uh, I realize I'm talking very one side at this point, but honestly, from this opening, that's because that is the way this game has progressed. Dez, though, is going for the tried and tested, if behind Dark Shrine approach, though, getting his Dark Shrine down, and also, yeah. his first Colossus is about to pop. Admittedly, this could have been now 10 minutes ago, Ooh. but still. Oh, Zeta Warpins coming in. Double Zeta Warpins. The Greatest Spire getting focused. This could be a good little win here for Dez. The Transfuse coming down from Shibby. He's trying to mass Transfuse it. Would he be able to keep it up? No, he doesn't. That's a bit of a loss, actually, for Shibby. Nice snipe off there by Dez. And actually, those Warp Prisms finally doing something of use. Hmm. He's immediately warping in nine Stalkers as well. The supplies are currently 199 to 146. Um, the one thing that I'm a little bit concerned with for Shibby, his worker supply is down is 92, which is a little bit high, I guess, um, compared to the 74 of Dez. Dez is now stabilizing on three bases. Um, Shibby needs one more nice engagement where he can basically chuck away his army and tr trade it against Dez's and say, look, mate, I have a great economy here. I'm going to be able to remax a lot faster than you will. And the result is that I should go and win this game of StarCraft 2. Let's see if it can happen. A great storm to start off with. Two great, three great storms to start off with. But he is running away from the Ultras. A good position coming in from Dez. And Shibby is just hounding him at the natural. Uh, the Ultras aren't actually doing that great a job. But the problem is the third base is simultaneously getting destroyed here. And I think this could be the beginning of the end for Dez. His income is going to drop like a rock. Shibby is now mining more than twice as much and the units aren't dead yet. Yeah, these Ultras are still going to be pushing forward. Pathogen Glands is also coming in, and that's the only thing from Shibby's army, which I do feel is missing slightly. A couple of Infestors to get the Fungal Growths, to lock down the Stalkers for the Ultras, to just getting close to an Omnom their way through is essential. But yeah, the big point is that, as you said, Joasar, Shibby mining a huge amount more. Currently, after losing that third, Dez is now just to one mining base, up against however many Shibby has right now. 2.2k minerals a minute compared to just around 600. That's pretty big. And, and over 58 double the gas are about to pop. Yeah. And nine Ultralisks. So, Shibby is going to continuously send a massive stream of units against this army. I mean, look at this. He's just moving straight on in. Corruptor's going to try and deal with that one lone Colossi and the Mothership Core. Will be able to. Mothership Core has no energy for mass recall. That's going to go down very quick. And the Colossus is 
follow the suit. Only the Blink Stalkers can outrun this army with Blink ability. But even then, Shibby's just going to chase him all the way home. And the Lings are constantly picking a couple more off. This is uh, looking like a losing battle for Des, unfortunately. Yeah, he's about half the supply of Shibby. Shibby also doing the smart move, bringing the Zergling down the other side to go for the surround. That means there's not even the blink away ability. The Ultras are oh, the Stalkers just running straight into them. And this is now where those Ultras omd on their way through. One Ultra will die for his happy meal. But, of course, that just means that Zerglings can come in, start picking away at probes. Dez has really no choice. Wow. Smoke, and to GG. Wow, Maddles. Ultra's just got a lot less manly. Apparently they have happy meals. You, you've actually destroyed how I look at Ultra's now. GG and Shibby takes game number.